Zoom assistant here tonight. Um, and I'm going to um, basically, if you have any questions, you know, during it, um, enter in the chat um, and we'll be monitoring that. If there's any technical issues, you can private message me um, and we can, I can help you out there. Um, and I think that's about it. I'm going to turn it over to your chat monitor there, Kathy Saunders. First thing, Cheryl, does everybody know how to chat? Hopefully by now you've Zoomed enough. I was just going to tell them that. Just oh, chill. Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> I am the chat monitor, you know. Go back to Hi, good evening. My name is Kathy Saunders. I'm the assistant director of Farmington Valley. Um, I am your chat monitor. So if you do have any questions, please put it in the chat. You will find your way. If you look down at the bottom of your screen, there is a little well, I don't know what you call it. It's a little thing that says chat. You click on that, a little box will come up onto the right side of the screen. Whatever you want to do, it says type your message here. You type that in. I will get that to Heidi for any questions that you have. Um, hopefully, um, we'll have a few. That'll keep her busy. Um, and I have the distinct, should I mute myself or can I chat anytime? You can chat anytime, but it would probably be nice if you muted yourself you, uh, because any background noise is going to interfere with everything that's going on. And gosh knows we need to hear what Heidi has to say. So um, if you would just you know mute yourselves, that would be great. And I will keep my eye on that. Um, and I have the distinct pleasure of introducing Heidi for those of you who don't know her. She is on the inter international faculty. She has. Um, she's been a member of Sweet Adeline since 1979. Um, she served in many capacities, both at the regional level and the international level. Um, she, again, like I said, is on the international faculty. She's been our Region 1 um, Education Coordinator. She's been on the RMT, which is Regional Management Team. Um, she's been a Chorus Director for 21 years. She sang in three award-winning regional quartets. Um, she is a retired teacher and she's very active in her local Lions Club. Um, so with nothing with further ado, I will mute myself and here you go, Hyde. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I must say teaching by Zoom is bizarre to me because I am not used to having everything quiet. So every now and then, if you want to, you know, throw your chat on and just go <laughs> or make some kind of noise, um, that would make me feel better because I hate quiet. I don't know about you, but it makes me crazy. Not that I could be much crazier. So uh, I hope everybody is doing well. It's so cool to have people on from different regions. And it's funny, I taught this class at one point, speaking of Region 14, back in November 2010. It's right here, Region 14. Way back then. That's when I think I was then. And uh, yes, thank you for the noise. Love it. Okay, so we are going to jump into this. And um, I was very lucky to be able to ask Jen Cook from wherever she's, you know, all know all Jen Cook, blonde. She does all these tapes and everything. Uh, for her quartet to make some tapes for me to demonstrate some of these things and and obviously i'll say from the beginning that sometimes it is difficult to be able to discern what's wrong especially in this venue uh, but we're going to try it and see see what you can hear and if you hear what i want you to hear and if not i'll tell you what you heard how's that <laughs> so this class is one of my favorites it's called tools for our trade and it's a vocal production built problem solving class. And the premise of the class is to have a resource and a handy toolkit for those, for yourselves to use if you're having a issue, particular issue, vocal issue, or if you're a director, if you're in a quartet, or you coach. So, um, and, and I will also tell you, you do not have a handout because that would give away everything I'm doing. But if you would like, <laughs> Uh, I will give you my email at the end, and I I will let you borrow. Um, it's in a PowerPoint presentation, so you can let me know if you can take it that way or if I have to put it in a PDF. But that's why you didn't get it 
in advance. Um, so, and then another component of this class that I sometimes add in is to have the ana analytical listening part of it. And we're going to see how that works. And Jen's quartet's name is Presto. Um, she did do it so we could see their faces, but I think rather than switching back and forth between share screen, we're just going to do the audio and then I can have them singing one song at the end. But I will tell you when they were sing it's very difficult to do things wrong and to demonstrate things that you don't normally want to demonstrate. And so to see their faces, I laughed hysterically the first time I saw them demonstrating one thing. So you'll be able to just imagine what's what that's like. So with this, the key is to use your ears. And I used, and I'll show you this picture because I love it, this. Hopefully you can see the Easter ears, how the ears are chopped off. What? <laughs> Asking you what you hear and then what? Oh, look at that. You're highlighting it. Is it written backwards or you can read it? No, nope. good. Okay. We can read it. You can read it? Awesome. Okay, so we are going to start at the very beginning. And I want you to think. Now, first of all, when you're out in front of a group, it's up to you to decide. You can stop the share screen, Kat, so I can see everybody's beautiful face or whoever did that. Um, you have to decide what is the main thing that you want to work on, where you get the biggest bang for your buck. And know that everybody deals with things differently okay and um i might focus on something different than what cheryl might focus on and karen sweeters might focus on etc cetera, etc cetera. but i want you to think listening to this tape what you think we're going at here what the the main thing uh that's wrong okay so turn up your volume so you can hear and here we go. After today, after today, after today, after Okay, so what do you think that might have been demonstrating? And obviously you have to unmute yourself or however you want to do. Anybody have any ideas? Or am I going to have to tell you? Have you already failed? Have you already failed my class? We just began. All right. As, as a tenor, that hurt. <laughs> okay. It hurt. That hurt. Now, why did it hurt? As there was so much tenor, there was a lack of balance. There was no cone. It was awful. <laughs> I didn't even realize it was human. <laughs> okay, so let me tell you what it was supposed to demonstrate. And as I said to you, and, and I was wondering with the, the tenor comment was because she wasn't singing the way she was supposed to sing. And what I wanted from all of them was basically a thin, tight sound. So be, for instance, your, your comment about the tenor was true because she was singing the way we used to sing the pee pee sound. Just very. So if some, if you're hearing a thin sound or something that sounds tight, it doesn't sound open. Some things that you can do to open up that sound and as I'm going through some of these, I want you to think which one of these things resonates with you. What would click the best for you? And if you have other ideas, we'll add to it. So one of the ways that I would fix this would be the old adage of holding your arms out in front, bending your knees, and, um, and being, having your weight on the balls of your feet and filling this area with your sound. So that would be one of the ways I would work at filling out the sound and, and, and uh, making it less uh, constricted. Again, you, you don't have to take zillions of notes because you can write to me and I'll give you what I have here. Uh, I, there was also a comment in the chat. Pat said that she was hearing all individual voices. Okay. 
because I'm telling you, it was painful for them to do. If I showed you the picture, you could tell. Um, another thing you probably remember from years ago, before I was born, I remember hearing um, that they had talked about Julia Child, right? Whom do you choose? Oh, no. <clears throat> and holy moly. All of those things help to get you to open up the sound. One thing I always loved as a director that helped me with a chorus, and it was one of the quickest things to do, and that was to have them sing opera. I said, pretend as though you're in an opera. I want you to, to sing that way. And believe it or not, that brought them closer to the sound that I wanted versus where they had been. And then I would back them up from that opera sound. Another thing, and, and some of these you're going to find are cures for a lot of different things, is to bend over and then to sing an ah and slowly stand up. I love that particular exercise to keep the sound. So whenever you find an area in a song where you feel like you're tightening up, if it's, if it's too high for you, too low, bend over, get the sound and the right pitch and stand up. The ningy ning ah exercise, the ningy ningy ning ah, bringing it to the face first, face in the mask, and then letting it go. Um, thinking of a tall, full sound. And as a director, if I felt the, the sound was more pinched, I would direct so I was depicting tall. You can't see my other hand, but it's there. I would depict a tall sound is what I was looking for. All of you who have been around me long enough, and sorry for those of you from the other regions, but now you're going to learn a little bit about the crazier side of me. And one thing I feel that is the most motivating, I'm not too crazy. Don't believe anything anybody says from Region 1. It's not true. But one of the ways that I get people to sing a full round sound and to keep it consistent is to visualize a sewer pipe. And if they don't keep that sound coming towards me, that the ugly water in the sewer pipe is going to back up all over them. Okay, if that's not motivating, I don't know what it what is. So that really helps to keep that sound. To think of the sound in a vowel tunnel in the same place the whole time, never changing, no matter where you, you are in your vocal range, keep it in this same space. Uh, thinking of a column of air of, in your body, coming up and out, constant airflow. And then Dale Syverson's ah, okay? Can you, as you're si sitting there, just sing what you see here. Uh, oh. Yep, now sing it this way. Oh. Okay, so you, you should have sung a wider sound the second time, correct? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to hit on the different learning styles, the kinesthetics, the visual, etc. cetera. Uh, some people like singing a mm -ma, mm -ma, to get that buzz feeling first and then to open it up. You can bubble the sound and then sing. You can hold your knuckles in your cheeks here to get the area open and or stick your cleanest finger inside between your molars and do an ah or ah oh, so you get that feeling of the openness. Thinking about your sound as it would be with a water faucet or with a hose. That's continual. It's not a spurt, spurt, spurt. Uh, thinking of the cathedral feeling in your mouth when you yawn and how that feels and have that while you're singing or you're, you're about to sing. Uh, you want to make sure that you don't overcompensate. And there are some people who are on this call with me who were in a quartet with me at one point and the coaches kept on saying, you're, you sound too young. Well, number one, we were young. So what are we supposed to do? So what we did was, we're like, okay, we got this, we got this nailed. And we were like, oh, 
oh, it sounded huge inside our heads. But we overcompensated and we brought the sound back. Sounded huge in our heads and we thought we nailed it. And we went to the coach and they're like, what are you doing? We're trying to sound older. Well, we didn't nail it. So you have to be careful that when a coach asks you to do something that you we're all overachievers that you don't go beyond that and if you found that you did bring it back hold your finger out in front and sing towards your finger so what is what are some of the things that resonate with you who would like to share what really helps you as a singer and if you want you can raise your hand first before blatting out all at once can't wait to hear some of you talk <laughs> it's not just me okay Martha hi everybody so one of my favorite things and I think this was from Joe Lund she would have you take a breath and bend over and sing the tone with your head down and then come and stand up tall and then you contain that and continue that same tone and it helped keep the sound in your head and, and projected and resonating and round so martha that was my ah exercise that was the bending over ah thing right yeah i think that, like that one the best that was helpful for me okay anybody else or anybody have new ideas yes who is that lois no susanna looks like lois from our region Hi, no, it's Ginny Devlin. It's Suzanne. It's my granddaughter. Oh. Um, we we do the colander on your head kind of visualization, like you're trying to put the sound up as much as anything, and that helps to broaden it and make it bigger. Keep it in your head, voice. Okay, very good. Who else? And I'm not seeing all the screens. I don't know if uh, Cheryl and Kathy can. Some of them are uh, blacked out, so it's hard to see. If they're raising their hands, I was looking, I'm watching the chat, but I see nothing there. Lots. Go ahead. She just moved. Where'd you go, Helen? Oh, I'm here. Oh, there you are. You're up on top. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what, you know, talks to me is to sing in the mask. Okay. And, and the air is coming out of your nose and your eyes and here and above the cheeks. Okay, anyone else? If not, we can move on. Okay, I think we're ready to see if we can get this next one since the first one worked so well. Okay, here's our next one. Make sure your volume's turned up. After today, after today. Okay, hopefully you got that one. Um, I've got a couple of things here. One says, bass sounds wide on day, machine gun notes. Are a few things that are here. Yep. Okay. Anybody? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna jump in. Yep, go ahead, Karen. Hi. Um, to me, it sounded as if they were hitting the consonants way too hard. Okay. The, the, anybody else want to share? I've got another one says not singing vowel to vowel, no flow, choppy. They forgot about the cone. <laughs> and, <laughs> and as, as you hear things, again, you're you're going to be able to hear other things, but the the goal was to have them sing vertically. After today, a a. <clears throat> which is, you know, your comments, no flow, etc. We're all related to that. So if people are singing vertically, again, to connect to the body, you can move your hand smoothly side to side in front of you as you sing. You can think of singing down the front steps. I'm not sure why down. I guess you could also think up. Think, you know, just, just to envision the sound going particular direction. Sing with the sound out of a garden hose again or a faucet because it's not doing a psh, 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 psh. 
sing down a rope, sing on the phrase on ah. I love the ah a lot. Uh, breaking it down so they would just ah, and then they would add in the words and hopefully that would help to smooth it out. Uh, thinking again about the vowel tunnel that we talked about before. I like, um, as a chorus director, I like having a particular exercise that will bring the chorus um, together with all aspects of singing, with the resonance, with the uh, horizontal singing, etc. And you can do that, you know, finding your own tools, but one that I like is may, my, may Me My Momu or similar. Or the exercise we always did, let us go now, because it was working on the target vowels, that exercise. And I'm sure your directors probably have a bunch of other exercises you can use in that manner. Um, you could sing thinking of longer or taller vowels to connect the words, less consonants. You could also, another thing I like is to, um, to sing the phrase on a tonic chord. So you're breaking the song down so they're not thinking about their individual notes. And the progression I would do is I would first have them sing on an ah, then I would have them sing the phrase so they're singing the words on the tonic chord. So now they're not thinking about their notes, where their notes are, but they're focusing on that. And then you would progress to the next. Um, similar to the very first demonstration I gave you was the feel, thinking of feeling a smooth surface. That's another thing, or washing, or wax on, wax off. Um, okay, what resonates with you? What works for you? Or what other ideas do you have? Okay, yes, uh, Lori. It's using a wide paintbrush horizontally and not letting it leave the surface. Yes, that's awesome. That was actually one of mine. I forgot about it. It really was, but that's a good one. I like not leaving the surface. That's really good. I'm writing these down, too, so I could add to my toolbox. <laughs> who else? There's a lady by the name of Wendy Cudmore who raised her hand. Okay, go ahead, Wendy. Okay, um, I found that because it, this was something I struggled with when I first joined Sweet Adelines, and I practiced first by smoothing my hand, as you said, Heidi, and then I needed a way to do it when we were performing. And so I found that I can slide my hand, my finger down my thigh to remind myself at any part that's where you're likely to have trouble. And I found that works for me. Good. We're going to go right along the top, at least top of my screen. So okay. Melissa's next and then Linda. Okay. Um, I was at a workshop once and they taught us to um, use our hand as if you're going around a mixing bowl to keep you um, with that constant airflow, um, keeping things moving and not singing note to note. Okay, good. Okay, Linda. Um, I, I uh, actually piggyback on Wendy because people laugh at me, but I tell them really, if you just rub your arm or rub any part of your body, um, it does what the, yeah, I know, I know, but just, just rub your forearm or something when you're singing. And for some reason, the connection of those two body parts and the smoothness of the rubbing will really help. This just, just so you know, Linda, this is a G rated class. So. I know. Well, that's why I'm just there, pretty much going to stay mute reasons. forever. I've already said I'm not allowed to misbehave. So right down. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I know. Right along. I'm not going to follow Linda again. A, okay. And that's Mark Bailey's daughter, by the way. Okay, Judy. Judy Sanford. I didn't respond. Oh, well, I just said A's, but I didn't, I wasn't responding. Okay, I, I saw a wave hand up there, so that's why. I have, on chat, I have a lady, Pat, Pat Thompson. She said, Dale Syverson and Darlene Rogers said to visualize pulling scarfs out of your mouth. I think I would gag. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's cool. And I think Dale kind of knows what she's talking about, and Darlene. 
Yeah. Anybody else? Okay, awesome. Should we move to the next thing? Let's see how we can do with our guessing here. Okay, our third problem. After today. After today. Okay, what do you think? They got into it more as the time went on. They were able to do it more. We got sync, chords not lining up, too much T, a lot more sync. Um, that's what I've got in the chat so far. You got it. Sync and unity. And obviously, if you're not in sync, a lot of other things are going to happen. And, and again, I laugh because I know I've attempted to do these particular things wrong and it's just so hard to do anyway okay so some things for that i'll give you my ideas and you're going to give me yours um for sync and unity you can do what they call doot or book the phrase doot 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 or book 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 whatever the song is and you never hold it it's always short as you're singing it makes sense um, you can sing, again, sing the words on the tonic chord because then you're going to know where the issues are. Again, the people, you've taken away the, um, their notes, so you'll be able to know where the sync errors are. Um, you can, Linda was talking about this and, uh, hell, no, Wendy, I believe, before about the, um, this would be keeping beat with your fingers on the side seam. And then if you're in chorus in front, you've probably seen people do this before. Um, and I know as a director, I would always say to the chorus, do what you need to do during a rehearsal because that's what it's there for. Um, if you're having sync and unity issues, you can break it down where you would have duetting and then have people add to the front and maybe you do it one person at a time. Let me see how I would have to do it this way. He would add a person in front of those two so they could hear what's happening and then add another person and you, you keep moving it to where they move behind and then you keep adding people till everybody is singing it correctly. And the same premise is having them sing through other people so they can hear where they're supposed to be singing. You can have in a, a chorus configuration where you have all the three parts humming the notes, but the leads are singing the words because then you figure out who has the sync issues. And we all know it's probably the leads. It's never the baritones. So, you know, it'll take care of it right like that. Um, if you, some people like if you touch shoulders, you know, touch the person near you because then there's a connection and or you, you close your eyes and you sing because you're making yourself focus on that. You sing face to face with someone. Um, and then uh, the last one I have is to spread out and sing. That's an exercise I love at contest, to spread out as far as you can, because it's amazing what that does. It makes you use your ears more and it makes you more attentive. So what are some things that resonate with you or new ideas? Okay, Karen. I don't have a new idea or a resonating thing at the moment, but I do have a question. Go ahead. What is it that basically caught, our chorus has some issues with sync. What is it that basically causes sync problems? Is it that people don't have the rhythm in their head? Is, what, what would you say is the root cause? Okay, I could get in trouble here, but the, the first thing I would do as a coach to rule it out was to check and make sure that the director was giving exactly what they wanted. Like for an upbeat, uh, up tune, are they directing too much where the chorus has no clue and are they not directing the beat, for instance? Um, so I would rule out the director first. 
I would then say to the chorus, the director is here for a reason. You need to follow her because we all know, and I'll just use, hopefully there's no Mabel's on the line. I'll use the name Mabel and say, you know, we all know that we all have Mabel's in our chorus. So whoever she's called in your chorus who, you know, are kind of like out on their own and, you know, they're not riveted to the director. And so that will cause sync issues. And it, it, and it is true that some people don't feel the music. They don't feel the beat. And so what I would do is if there were that many sync issues in the chorus, I would have to go off in the sectionals and figure out where the issues are. And, you know, maybe it is in that particular song or whatever that a couple of people, for instance, might not be able to feel that kick rhythm or whatever. And you might have to say, don't sing these two measures when that kick rhythm comes up. That would be my thing. Cheryl, you have anything else to add or anyone else who's lived through that? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it's, you know, making sure that it's vowel to vowel singing, that everybody understands that it's vowel to vowel singing. And when, when it lifts off and to lift the phrase endings to go in and sometimes it's the breath, not quite getting the breath, the same beat, you know, so right. Duetting and getting it, breaking it down like that is the best way to find out wh where it's not in sync and what one person needs to do to the versus the other. Yeah. Lois Jensen's got some Okay. You have a question or, or no, a comment? I got a suggestion. Kim Vaughn uh, did this with my quartet, and she had us sing the lead. The harmony parts all sang oh. the lead for like a phrase or two at a time so that we really made sure we were singing in sync with her when there weren't, you know, like different parts coming in at different times. So that helped a lot. And that is a big one. I know the buzz. And, and I got to tell you, I hate doing that. I, I just hate it. I don't know why I do, but I know it's good. Yeah. <laughs> My class, I can hate whatever I want. Because uh, what, what I do find, however, is that you really have to be in tune, especially in a quartet situation, but even in the chorus, you've got to be in tune to all the little nuances that the leads do. And you don't know that until you break it down. Okay, Martha, you had your hand up and you were waiting patiently. Yeah, so I think um, when I listened to the quartet, it sounded like their tone tonality was flat, that I wanted more of a lifted sound to everybody as they sang. And I think that really has to do with your, your space when you start to sing. You have a breath space in your mouth, you have a breath space in your chest, and it wasn't the same. It was mismatched. So you're not going to get the same tonality if that space isn't matched. Okay. And I have a comment on the chat that says clarify from Marty, clarify the downbeat and the backbeat. Uh, do they want me to clarify or they're just saying you've got to clarify? I think that would help with sync. I'm thinking that's what they're saying. Clarify, make sure that you know you know where the downbeat is and if it's backbeat. And and some people do not feel the backbeat. They do not. And you know, sometimes, as a matter of fact, I took it off my list because I wasn't going to go there. Uh, one thing was to, to clap. Well, there's some people who can't walk and chew bubble gum and clap or, you know, so you got to be aware of that. And um, I've had people say to me, you are not musical, but are doing a particular thing. And they're like, well, what if we have, you know, everybody in this brand new chorus who have never sung together clap too. And I'm going, no, no, not happening. <laughs> <laughs> trouble you know you're gonna all the time okay so are we good yeah all right yeah. everybody yeah. have fun okay here's the next one now hopefully this is going to be obvious okay. after today after today Okay, what did you hear or didn't hear? A lot of tea. Yeah. 
This one's a tough one. I got nothing in chat, Heidi. Okay. It, it was hard. Um, they were trying to sing loudly. It was supposed to be without dynamics. Um, if you know that the, the dynamics really transcend the song. There's my vocabulary word of the day. That's all you're getting from me. During COVID, I'm amazed that came out of my mouth. So I'm happy. One for me. Thank you. Um, so one of the things... I have to amuse myself too, because you guys are just being too quiet. It's killing me. So one of the things that works for me when I think about dynamics, you know, as you sing softly, that you have to have energy. You have to have more energy probably than when you sing louder. And so I like to think about, and if this is quirky, I'm warning you now. I like to think about the, the little tiny bugs that hug, hover over the water. And they've got, they work to keep their little feet out of the water. And people who I've directed, you know, I've used that analogy because to me, that kind of depicts how you have to sing a soft. You can't just, because it's not going to sound good. You got to keep those, you have to keep it energized and keep your little feet above the water. Okay. Then um, having them, and this I learned, I thought of later on in my directing career, was to have the group perform exercising. Uh, exercises singing through the dynamic range. So you have the range of one to five and you go, director would go, may me my mo mo, may me my mo mo, may me my, all the way one through five and then have them jump around because we as directors want the chorus to sing certain volume levels, right? We say to them a one, a five. Now, how many chorus members do you think know what their number one is and what their number five is? Okay, they have no clue. So this hit me one day and I thought this is what we need to do. We need the chorus members to get in their head what feels like a number one. What is my number one where I'm not going <laughs> where it's not supported and where is your loud ha <laughs> too loud. So there you go for that. Um, for to build up your stamina to sing softs, an exercise you can do is sing the vowel E as softly as possible and keep it steady. E, don't let it go. E, 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 e. Um, the other thing as far as dynamics, you need to be aware of what the cording is asking for. If the cording is moving up, what are they looking for? loud louder when the cording goes down and like the bases are on the the low low c it, do you think they want a loud sound no okay they want a softer so be aware of that what ideas do you have for dynamics or what of these things resonate with you and help you anybody have anything you're such a cl good class all right wait a minute <laughs> Karen. Karen. I, I have another I have another question because I do remember at one of our coaching such sessions, I forget who it was, said um, the, the absolute worst thing you can ever do is over sing. And um, as you're working through the dynamic range, my guess is that by the time you get to five, you're pretty much already there. And so you shout the last one how do you how do you keep it within the range do you know what i'm saying yes so so what i was saying is that um, i'm hoping that chorus members can do this on their own and if they can't again maybe that's something you want to do in sectionals because i want you to sing your number one and your number five within where it's going to be pretty where you're not overdoing it and, and I just noticed uh, Wendy Patcher, I'm taking your job, sorry for a second, says maintaining the density of sound and slowing down airflow, the connection of resonance and volume. So it, it's, it's just making people more aware of what they're doing and how they're doing, because we don't want, their five should not sound ugly. Their one should not sound ugly. Hi, Becky, glad you could make it here. Other comments? <laughs> I'm sure that a lot of people have seen the exercise where you have your, 
hands out and then you you, you bring what the sound and the dynamics work that that you can explain it better than I but I, I that's been around a while okay yeah and a lot of it again you need you need many different things in your toolbox when you're attempting to fix things because not everybody connects with you know um, things that are in their mind they they they've got to feel it or you know so you constantly have to be thinking of different things that's why the more things you have in your toolbox the better coach you're going to be and i'm one who i'm going to keep working and beating on you till you get it because i figure that's why you've hired me and i want you i have faith that you're going to get it i will tell you some of our higher coaches sometimes at least in the past have given up i've watched them give up and just move on which you know that's not my philosophy but because i would rather get it and rather help the group I think the other thing I'd, I want to mention is I think that everybody has to be aware of their own. My five is not your five. My right. two is not your two. Um, you know, you have bigger voices, smaller voices. And if you try to match someone who's next to you who has a larger voice, you will find yourself over singing. So know where your own individual numbers are. Right. Don't trust anybody else but you. Correct mundo. Okay, are we ready for the next issue? Judy Sanford said, hi, Wendy. Oh, 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 who did? Judy Sanford. She said, hi, Wendy. So I'm just, you know, maintaining what there is. Do we care about Wendy right now? Come on. She apparently <laughs> does. Martha? Too late. You're too slow. Moving on to the next thing. Here we go. After today, after today, after today, after They were dying on that one. Okay. Anybody have an idea? Nothing. Should I rescue okay. you? I've got a lowest lowest set of tax and releases. That's the closest. The closest is too yeah, loud. The first one. Okay. It's too loud. Nobody else got their hand up. Breast support. Okay. So no, they, it was not lifting ends of phrases. They were just letting them dive off. Again, when you're used to doing it, to do it wrong is so hard. And if you could see their faces, it's comical because they're just, you could tell they're dying. Like, how do I let this happen? And psh. okay. So ways of fixing that moving your arms in an upward motion at the ends of the phrases to keep it going. And even if you're holding that end for a little bit is to keep your hands going to keep that energy going and keep the sound moving. Think of taking a breath at the beginning of the phrase and not at the end. Um, too, too often people don't think about how long the phrase is going to be and don't uh, save, I shouldn't say save their, their uh, sound, but you've got to um, think ahead so that you have enough breath support to last. Because you, what you don't want is you don't want to be doing after today and trying to squeeze it out. You need to just stop singing and come back in again if you get to that point. Uh, another thing from ages ago was to think of spinning or a dairy dip, you know, um, what do you call it? Smooth ice cream. Yeah. At the end oh. of the phrase to think of it going up. Um, if you're singing in a circle, sing to somebody across from you so that you're sending your sound across and thinking of it going somewhere. There was a time in which we used an elastic band, a thick elastic band, and you keep stretching it at the end to keep that sound going. And then 
Now, I'm gonna warn you now, and hopefully Linda's not still, she's still here, okay? Don't let your mind go in the gutter. But this is something we thought of that was used a lot years ago, was the action of screwing the last note or the held note. Keep doing something with it. Okay, so what resonates with you? What other ideas do you have? Come on now. Guys are fading. So not past your bedtime yet. No ideas? It's okay if you don't. I'll just Martha. So maybe in terms of turning diphthongs together, sometimes there can be a physical motion that can be made by the lead or by a, a member of the quartet that is going to help you to turn that diphthong together. So that there's a there's a hold, there's a lift, there's a lift, and then there's a movement to kind of get you into that next part of the vowel. Okay, and obviously some of this uh, you can rely on a director if it's a chorus situation. Um, if if you hold out the phrase as long as you're supposed to, you will all breathe together and come in together. I have um, the <laughs> screwing goes up and out. Is another comment that's in the chat room right now. Yep. <laughs> from Peggy. Okay, ready for the next. Here we go. I almost wish they used a different tag, but can't be picky. Oh, Bigger. this is a good one, Hyde. Don't go yet. This one she says, wait, 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 wait. Ah! Okay, go ahead. It says ski jump. Think about it, it being a ski jump at the end of each phrase. That's a that's a novel. I hadn't heard that before, but I can see where that would work. It came from Lori. Love them. Shades of Harmony. Hello. All right. Good job, Lori. Okay, so here we go again. Uh, after today. After today. Does that help you? <laughs> so edgy sound. So with that, basically you want to utilize more air. Now you have to be careful if you're a coach, Wendy Cole Patcher, ouch. ouch. Uh, <laughs> you have to be careful when you're talking about air to a group. Again, because the overachievers will take that after today, hey, Marilyn Monroe. So you have to be careful they don't go to that point. I like the word feathering out the sound. So if they're a laser, what I call a laser beam, edgy sound, to feather out the sound. Hold your pointer fingers as goal posts, okay, and sing through, through that so you're not allowing the sound to go out. Again, it might work with some, might not work with others. Uh, keeping the sound in this area. Sing out your ears or sing to the person in front of you, then behind you, then on both sides of you. Because now you're dissipating the sound out and you shouldn't be able to sing as edgy as you would if you, know, you were just singing in your own space. And then uh, the holding your hands out next to your face, fill that area with the sound, move your hands out further and further and further is another. Comments, other ideas? You're all so, stu you're too studious. That's what it is. All, I, I see this. Everybody's taking notes. Writing. Okay, no, Wendy. Not. You're muted. Can't hear you, Wendy. You're muted. Sorry. Um, would this also be a good one for putting your arms this way and, you know, the way you. Yeah, yeah barrel. And the barrel, right. And having them fill that way would take the edge off because they had to have a rounder sound. Right, right. 
Yep. Wendy's got another another Wendy. She says Wendy Cole Patcher. She says she tells her singers to warm up the up warm up the sound. I would gather with lift. Yep. Is that it, Aunt Wendy? Did I say what you said? Yes, you did. Good job. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Hi, Wendy. And to use the warm, using warm air, if you tell them to use warm air, um, that helps. Okay, Martha, go and get your quota. Your quota is almost done for the night. Just <laughs> so I was wondering about maybe making your sound come out here versus here, that it sounds like it's kind of like a, it's like a machine gun here, right off of your lips. And if you make the sound a little bit further away from your lips, out further that it may be a little softer and a little, little more resonant. Right. That's why the, uh, the, the thought of singing to somebody across from you was a theory, an idea. Good one. <laughs> okay. We're ready to move on. Yep. Oh, no more ahead. hands. Uh, wait a minute. That was that one. I didn't get rid of that over here. This is my bugaboo. After today, after today, after today, after today, after today. <laughs> you got the, the, the chat is blowing up over here. <laughs> I think if I brought a vibrato, I like this one. Wendy good, good says, unstable tenor. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any others? <laughs> Just unstable make it tenor. stop. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was easy. That was, oh, Lori, that, that was easy. One. That's a fun one. Okay, so vibrato, work on breath support. Uh, sing down the front step, stairs or down a rope or up a rope all of those things. Uh, again, thinking about the steady faucet or garden hose. Um, hold hand on the abdomen and slowly pull in. Uh, pretend, this one is kind of funky. Uh, pretend your lower lip has a string that is tied somewhere out in front of you. Elevate the string. Pretend your voice is oil to lubricate the string. That's like too much for me. I've lost it. Okay. Um, relax the throat. Hot, warm air, hot air. Transport the sound further forward, moving the sound away from you. Um, okay. Singing, singing on the floor for better breath support. Right. Lying down on the floor. Yep. I have lie on your back and sing. That's a yep. saying. One thing I will tell you, I'll never forget. It was the first coaching session I ever did, Little Island Grove Chorus, and this this woman, a bass, had unbelievable vibrato. And, and so I don't know why, but it was just one of those things. Thinking on my feet, I took my hand. It's it's not going to be a perfect visual, but I made like a hooking hooking motion near my stomach, and I said I said to her, "Think of this. Think of." like this and it worked and she i was like bowled over because immediately she straightened out her tone and she said it was the first time in 40 years she had sung without a vibrato so i lucked out by thinking of this hook motion now i could do it another time it's not going to work but some of these other things might work so that was that was very cool um, and just getting them to and, Oh, another thing, Kim Vaughn, another way of thinking about this, uh, which I had never thought about before, and I don't know about you, is to think of speeding up the speed of that vibrato. And yeah. that, you know, that kind of makes my head, and I'm pretty analytical, you know, but that kind of, like, whatever is... Anybody else? You guys nailed that one. Okay, we got a, what do we have? Oh, six minutes? Uh, five, yeah. Oh, almost at your five minute mark. Okay, let me see. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I'm, I'm debating. Let me just, I'll do this without the without you listening, okay? Um, if, if somebody has lack of energy, 
Have them jog in place and then sing, or if you want to build up their stamina. Have them walk off the risers, come back up again, because sometimes they just get tired staying in one place. Uh, put your hand on the person next to you and have everybody pass energy through them. Like you need, you need to be there for your riser mate, riser mates. Uh, stand so that the backs of your hands, when it's not COVID, are touching the person next to you. And again, send the energy, feel the energy. It's amazing how this stuff works. Pretend, and I, I read this today in preparation for this class. I'm like, I don't ever want to think about a mask. But pretend to pick up a mask and put it on. Because when you do that, when you, you bend over, and now it's going to be hard because all we're going to think about is the COVID mask. But to bend over and just grab this mask of somebody else and go poof, it's, it's amazing what that can do. Sounds weird. Slap your wrists. Get the oxygen going again. Uh, push hands together, just if you go like this. Slap your thighs. And you can even demonstrate this by having certain rows of the chorus sing with energy, sing without energy, so that you realize the importance of that. I'm not going to let you add to it, just so you know, since we're running out of time and I want to give you more of these things. Um, let's do this one real quick with them singing. After today, after today. Any ideas? No forward motion. Very good. You got it. You nailed it. Okay. So this is tied in with the ends of phrases. Okay. Um, one thing you can do is close your eyes and sing, walk and sing, stand close to each other with the backs of the hands again. So you're, you're feeling, you're thinking, <clears throat> quick breath and sing, um, in between. Cause a lot of times we wait too long for people to breathe, uh, swell and build the ends of the phrases to kick it off. Oh, this one I use a lot is having them go like this. What does this do? It takes their mind off anything. Okay, they think it's going to be a remedy for whatever you have them do it for. But it's amazing how it works. Because all of a sudden they're doing what you want them to do. Uh, also, when singing a ballad, I always have the chorus think that they're singing in uptune. As a director, and the directors who are on here, Wendy, etc., would agree, it's harder for us to speed you up than it is to slow you down. So we're able to mold more if we have the chorus think about the song as an up to, to keep it going. And whenever you hold a note, you need to swell it. And you need to think about what words that you should be tugging a little bit, you know, spending a little more time on, and what words you want to move through to keep that forward motion and the energy going. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Um, Okay, I got to do this one because I know this one will be fun. Uh, two minutes. Yeah, two minute you. <laughs> we we going to say. Whatever. After today. After today. After today. Oh, my God. <laughs> Um, that was supposed to be a tuning thing. Uh, check chord balance. Um, a lot of, and I feel like people need to be more aware of the balance of the chords. Um, check the target vowels. Use the inside smile. Uh, lead sing the key note as the other, the tonic note as the other parts sing their parts. Um, ascend joyfully. Descend reluctantly. You can have the pitch pipe blown or held as they're singing because they've got to get that tonal center into their head. Um, let's see. Think of spinning the sound, cycling it. Kathy. I have a question on here. I know you're, you're continuing to give these things, but I think this is important. This lady would like to know. I know you mentioned it at the beginning. I'm not sure if she was here or not. Will Heidi's notes be sent out in a document? 
Noreen, can you see what she's doing? Uh, yeah, hold on for a minute. Let me take a picture. Okay. I was gonna say, could you type that in the chat? Oh, there's oh. a novel idea. There we go. Isn't that amazing how quickly I did that? You were looking at my hands and I just- You are good. Who ah, did that? Oh, region one, ready to go. Hi, I'll get rid of mine now. Well, I want to uh, I want to thank that quartet for doing that for me, uh, Presto Quartet, uh, to just add a little interest, a uh, little component to it. Again, it's very difficult, and any of you who have gone through the DCP program can testify to this. It's it's very hard when it's taped to be able to discern, um, and sometimes in person it can be hard enough. But know that when you have people out in front, they're going by their strengths and what they hear at that moment. Someone else equally as qualified could be out in front wanting to work on something else just because that's their strength at the moment or what they feel is going to give the biggest bang for the buck. It's not wrong. My way, of course, is always right. But no, um, it really depends on you know, again, what you want to get from the group and where you want to take them. And I hope that uh, this is helpful to you to take forward, to keep adding to, because the again, the more you have, the better coach you're going to be. Because if you only have one way to fix things and that doesn't resonate with a group you're working with, you're dead in the water. You're going to be giving up because they don't get it. And I know it's fun to just keep coming up with new things and then finally seeing that light bulb go off. It, it's so rewarding. There is um, a there is a um, link in the chat right now. Um, Cheryl just posted it for the evaluation form for Cheryl, for Heidi for this class. Um, it will do her good. If you do fill it out, please do so. And the other um, thing, the other thing that I'm just about ready to put in there as well as there's a link in, and I'm boasting this for my own course for Farmington Valley um, because we're trying to get uh, funds for international whenever we get to go to international. Um, but I'm putting the link out there now. Um, this is a new uh, sweatshirt that was designed as a logo on the front on the back. It will say um, region one on the back of it. Um, even though when you go to the link, it you have to do the 360 to see it. So that's another fundraiser that we are also promoting to this weekend. So, so to the evaluation, normally when we were in person, I would have a stamp that would say excellent, wonderful, whatever, but we're <laughs> not in person, so you're on your own. <laughs> Thank you so much, Heidi. This was a great class. Thank you. Class. So you were Thank you.